A long time ago, things were quite different. Queens were in the country, thus possibly creating a cue for trees. Lovely glossy creatures, a Ron Gelding and a black mare. Mr. Arthwaite had a fine reputation of being a fine judge of horse flesh. As he came down the stairs, Peter and Kit dismounted. The groom looked at Peter with questioning eyes. Mr. Arthwaite was impatient as he looked over his shoulder. He asked the two boys what he could do on this fine morning. Peter begged him to go inside to talk private. Arthwaite hesitantly ushered them in. Peter and Kit nodded following the magistrates into the back room. Mr. Arnthwaite closed the door behind them. Sit down, my lad. Oh, where are my manners? Might I take your coat? Actually, no. It's rather chilly in here, thank you. With it last, no one can hear us in here. Well, sir, it all started when my script got stolen. By the other gentleman? Yes. He wrote this terrible sonnet on the back of the script in the message. Uh, send news by Peel. Yes, that was the message. I will heard them plotting against the Queen to assassinate her. Dear me. Yes, it is a big deal. Exactly. So, we want to appeal with Tom Boyd. Yeah, we think Sir Philip and his men might have, well, killed him. Goodness me! So, I want to appeal alone, telling Kit to stay back and maybe get help. If I don't come soon. And I saw the men on their horsebacks, and so I tried whistling to warn Peter. Yes, but I sucked on some blood and got knocked out. I got scared when I heard a pistol go off, and so I ran for help as soon as possible. I walked on an island, but swam all the way here, and now I'm here. Certainly, and what do you wish me to do? Well, I suppose you will do what seems best to you. Certainly, certainly. I shall inform the necessary authorities. It is lucky you came to me and found me in. You might have gone to completely the wrong people with this story. That would have never done. Yes, it would never have done for this news to fall into the wrong hands. All of our plans would have been quite upset. I can't tell you how vexed we might have been.
I'll give you a minute's thoughts. Go around. She had opened the window and swung her leg out, looked back hesitantly, and jumped. Stand right over there. Yeah, that's right. Shortly after, Peter jumped out the window while the gun still pointed at Mr. Armfoy. They ran towards the groom, holding the rope that was tied to two fresh horses. Peter threatened to shoot the man if he didn't hand over the horses. Kit then told him in a bloodthirsty voice that she had a bullet for him too. But the groom knew she was bluffing, but stepped back in. Go. It was high time to be gone. Peter pressed the sides of the roan gelding, and he sprang forward with a scattering of gravel. Through the gate, Peter and Kit swept, and along the road with the shouts and screams fading behind them. Which way? Through the town, then south. Mr. Arthwaite's horses were of the kind that make men's turn appreciatively, and to see them ridden by boys was at least unusual. We seem to have left some old friend behind. Fair exchange, but I don't see Mr. Arthwaite and his men catching us on those mounts. It was lucky what you did. I can see his game now, of course. He'd have called servants and, and goodbye to all the hopes that the mess sending the message to London. Keswick lay beneath them in a green bowl of its valley, encircled by Skidaw and the other fells. As yet, there was no sp speck of pursuit on the winding road they had traversed. All right. It's wicked. The whole countryside is riddled with treason. Who can be trusted? Who is loyal? Peter could answer for most of the ordinary folk, like the statesmen of their own dale, but they couldn't send the urgent code message to the government for which the situation called. Well, can you think of anyone? No, I can't. Well, then what do you propose? We, we have to defend ourselves and those beauties over there. We need to try to get on time to London so we can deliver the news to Sir Robert. Well, I'm ready to go. If you are. Okay. <laughs>